you're listening to The Meta Talks, a Pokemon TCG podcast. The Meta Talks is brought to you by Sam Gulis and Des Dunn. Check out the Alolan Tales channel for more videos and for more podcast episodes. Thank you. Give me, let, me get, let me get a second to get my brain shizzles together. What's up, everybody? Today, here we are with a new podcast from you, from Sam and Dez. What's up, everyone? My name is Dez Dunn, and joined by all as and with us as always, your co-host Sam Goulas. This is even uh, more chaotic the, than the, the other cheering. intro. <laughs> this do is the, even do the, do the cheering. <laughs> this is even more chaotic than any other intro that we've done before. Your mom's chaotic. All um, right, well, so. <laughs> So today uh, we have gonna, uh, okay uh, fine it's we your have podcast now yes it's my podcast I started it hello today we have a lot of stuff happening because we haven't recorded a podcast in three weeks and the 2023 new- Pokemon Worlds Extravaganza <laughs> yes so well before we get into Worlds we're gonna start off with all of the stuff that happened right after we recorded the podcast that we last did so this is yeah well three weeks ago but. This is a so yeah, so we're gonna start with the new point requirements and points for league challenges and everything else here. So really not too much changed. I think the kicker numbers for all of the events changed a little bit. I don't know what they were before. The kicker numbers make it so that uh, more people earn league points. Only your top six uh, league challenge and league cup uh, placements will count for your uh, championship points or whatever yeah and now the cp threshold has been raised from 500 to 600 yeah the best of six also applies to regional championships our internationals there is no limit because there's only four so yeah but otherwise i mean that's about all that's changed along with that we've got our world qualifications uh cp amounts and those have gone up significantly significantly from last year significantly Significantly. so i it started at 500 for masters but ended up going down to 350 now this year it's starting at 600 which is a big jump yeah so if you're in us and canada as a master you'll need 600 points if you're in europe you'll need 500 points latin america 350 oceana 300 in middle east and south africa you'll need 250 and then now, these juniors and seniors are a little bit different. Those are a little lower. You can check those out on uh, the Play Pokemon website. Well, yeah. So they're making worlds more exclusive this year. How how do you feel about that? Um, I'm okay with that. Um, after I received this news, I pretty much uh, made the decision that you know what, I'm not gonna go for my worlds invite this year. Um, I just can't afford it as a college student who. Uh, doesn't have a, currently have a car right now. <laughs> there, there's uh, there's a lot of bigger things I need to worry about. I do plan on still going to a few regionals as a spectator, and I do plan on playing at NAIC just for fun. Who knows? Maybe I'll make day two and get on stream. That's that's my goal. Get on stream. I don't care about anything else. I just want one of those stream shirts. <laughs> Same. You know, if I could get on stream, that'd be so cool. But you know, I I thought about trying to go for worlds before I heard the number, but now that the number's out. I'm just kind of going to play and get better. I mean, I mean you, kinda, could, yeah. you could still try to go for that invite. I'm assuming you're going to be going to a bunch of regionals this year. We're Yeah, we're going to, I thought probably just stop going to the ones that are close enough to warrant going like on a three day trip, but otherwise it'll just Which be... ones are those? So speaking of that, we can go on to the, <laughs> <laughs> the, the regional championship schedule for next year. So See, I'm great at segueing. You're actually really good at it. So, bef- I know. so prior to this, I'm just starting off in the US Canada region because that's, you know, where I reside in currently. So we got up through, I think it was San Antonio before. I don't really know. Mm-hmm. So now yeah, we didn't have, I know we didn't have Charlotte before. Yeah. So now the rest of the regional schedule got revealed. So Along, the whole 2024 so yeah, season. So yeah, along with Pittsburgh, Peoria, Sacramento, Toronto, and San Antonio, we have regionals at Portland, Charlotte, Knoxville, Tennessee, I believe, uh, Vancouver, Orlando, Indianapolis, and then closing out at Los Angeles. So yeah. some new ones like Indianapolis instead of uh, Fort Wayne. How did, I <clears throat> kind of am glad about that because we... We actually both went to Fort Wayne last year, and it was cool, but being in a bigger city like Indianapolis would definitely be 
I think, much better for Pokemon now. Since I, that it... I, had a, I had a much better time at uh, NAIC than Fort Wayne, like, when it comes to the stuff outside of the venue. Yeah, like, at uh, Fort <clears throat> Wayne, if you wanted to, like, go and have dinner with your friends, you would probably be going to, like, a McDonald's. At um, yeah. NAIC, which was in, held in Columbus, there's, like, you could literally walk across the street and go to a really cool taco place. I may or may not be speaking from experience here. While we're on here. this topic... <laughs> While we're on this topic, at Fort Wayne, I ran into the Jake Gearhart at a subway. I was <laughs> too nervous to say anything. You know, it's just like, there's really not too much around Fort Wayne, which is just a much smaller town compared to the other ones, which is why I'm glad that they're going to bigger towns. I mean, one that mm -hmm. was stayed on here is Peoria. I feel like I haven't been to Peoria yet, so I don't know what it's like, but I have a feeling that it's probably going to be similar to Fort Wayne more than... It'll probably, NAC. I believe uh, Peoria will be one of the biggest regionals this upcoming year, aside from Indiana or Indianapolis. Yeah, I feel like Orlando might have a chance again because Orlando was the biggest Orlando, last year. Orlando, yeah. That was pretty big, yeah. So, but you know, since I'm, I don't know, I forgot, I'm probably just end up going to go to three regionals <clears throat> this year, Pittsburgh, Peoria, and Indianapolis. Those three seem to be the easiest so to get to. Maybe Knoxville. I don't know. I'm already going to Tennessee once. Or I've already gone to Tennessee once and I'm going again this year. I don't need to. Right. That's a lot of Tennessee for me. <laughs> so along Indiana, with... Indiana... Oh, sorry. Yeah, keep Indianapolis is going to be rough because that is... It, there's a lot of stuff going on for me, at least that weekend, usually with my college schedule. But we'll see. Yeah. All right. So along with those, we also got some European regionals which i believe are liverpool and or our and, chops across the pond and west fallon helen i really hope i said that right i am not what that's what it says on this thing it says west fallon helen Ooh, west west fallen so oh, it's in germany that it's sense. it's in germany it's, it's in like germany in its whole. i i think i'm part german i feel like i should know how to do this um we also have a latin america regional in brazil it's somewhere i don't know uh curie that's, that's curie unfortunate there's there's only one regional in latin america dude no. does latin america have the spes the special events or is that just like the spain area i don't know i there will european okay so there's also a european special event schedule as of right oh. now, as of right now there is one in barcelona and one in eucorect there aren't any for oceana latin america russia or south africa right now so but there could possibly be some later. I believe that there could be possibly be some, and I feel like they're going to have to. Um, you know, Oceania yeah. doesn't have any regionals right now, and we also do not know the locations of the four internationals. So those are still yet to come. But as of now, yeah. this is the schedule for next year, which I think will be pretty cool. Right. Now let's talk about some world's qualifications. That stuff changed too. You can no longer... Uh, so for skip sorry you can no longer skip day one of worlds the best you can do is get a travel stipend and uh get a stipend by stipend i always say stipend. <laughs> it doesn't matter tomato potato okay so yeah there's instead of the way they did it before where there is you could uh fight for a day two worlds invite there's now three tiers there's just the world's invitation then there's tier two which is uh sorry there's tier three which is just world's invitations there's tier two which is world's invitations and travel stipends which is allowing you to get some help for traveling to worlds and then there's tier one invites which are world's invitations travel awards and around one buy which just i'm assuming means you're not going to need to play in round one and you'll just get the win which will probably be kind of cool so there's a certain number of uh players that'll get each tier so for like for the u.s and canada rating zone tier one invites will go to the top 16 players tier two invites will go from player 17 to 22 and tier three will go through everyone else with championship points so it's making i guess the grind for day two kind of go away which is right so i i think that'll probably be nice for some of the upper players that are doing that i can't say i would I have know, experience uh... in that Players like Grant Manley and Raul Reddy, they express their 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 excitement for this new change. So it's a good thing. Mm -hmm. So many bad things that pokemon has been doing recently. <laughs> so yeah, that's that's about that. Um, so should we move into worlds now? <laughs> um, let me make sure there's nothing else we need to talk about first. You mean like 
the stuff that happened at Worlds? Yeah. Um. Yeah, because uh, Raging Surf that came that uh, was announced during Worlds. Yeah, I was gonna say we should do that after. So yeah, so yeah, let's talk about let's talk about the 2023 Yokohama World Championships and all that came with it. <laughs> so yeah, as of today, the Worlds happened over this past weekend, and it was actually. As a finals match started 24 hours ago, as yeah. of us recording. <laughs> That's actually really impressive. Yeah, finals We're started 24 hours ago. We're going to be one of the first podcasts covering this, this event. Yeah, let's go. Um, but yeah, yeah so... Like and edit it. <laughs> so yeah, as I personally have never watched a Pokemon Worlds before, so this is my first one that I watched, and I thought that it was very, very cool to watch. It was a very... Mm -hmm. It was a very impressive Worlds. The streaming matches were all very good matches i believe there was some impressive decks on there i mean uh, <laughs> we'll get to that <laughs> there's yeah there are some things but i guess we'll say or talk about the i guess our new world champion vance kelly with fusion mew i yeah i, I can't say i expected fusion mew to be sam are you champion. a mew hater or a mew supremacist you can't there's no in between you say there's no in between, but I fall in between because you played Mew before, and you whooped yeah. my ass so many times with it. So I, I sh honestly should have stuck with Mew for NAIC. Yeah, built the fusion variant. And I, that's what might be what I do now. You know, but I I can firmly say I'm in the middle. There are times when I think that it's really cool, and there are times when I very much do not think that it's cool. Like when I get turned to dunked when with you're losing to it. when I get turned to dunked by Meloetta is one of those times. So. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that was a very impressive finals match. I I feel like we should talk about that finals match going to time oh, yeah. instead of finishing out. Yeah, let's let's talk about both the deck lists first before we really go okay. into it. So yeah, because Mew Mew had a very spicy tech in it, being Box of Disaster. So yeah, wait, let's open this. Go ahead and image. hover over that so I can read what it does. Ooh, so yeah, so we have this entire deck list. The spicy card in this list was Box of Disaster which is reads, if the Pokemon V, this card says attached to us, full HP and is knocked out by damage from an attack from your opponent's Pokemon, put eight damage counters on the attacking Pokemon. So this was important in this match because... Uh, Pretty much a guardy counter. Yeah, Vance Kelly faced toward Reckliff, who played Gardevoir X, which just is a very direct counter to Gardevoir because it pretty much knocks out an attacker because Gardevoir puts so much damage on Pokemon when it sets them up. It's a very good call, I think. <laughs> mm-hmm. An um, another, another interesting tech that we didn't see at all in the World's Finals was Crystal Cave. Yeah, That's so... That's interesting. I believe that was just there for the Lost Box matchup, just to heal off some damage on your Genesects, because those are going to be the ones that... Your stabilize your opponent stabilize targeting. Yeah, I, that's the only reason I would think it'd be in there. I don't because normally I feel like every other deck's taking a one hit KO on a Genesect, so that's about the only reason why it's in there. There aren't any Dragon Pokemon in UV Max, so yeah, that would be yeah. my guess. But I I'm assuming it helped him a lot because he did make day two, or he he went through all of day one and day two to win Worlds, so I'm assuming that definitely helped him a lot. That is correct. So yeah, mm -hmm. there was that. Um, he chose to not play the Block Slider Ice Q, which we've seen in a lot of Mew lists, which is a little bit impressive. Um, yeah. Instead, he opted uh, to go for the Oricorio instead. Yes, he beat me to it. The Oricorio helping him out with <laughs> reducing damage. I'm assuming that's what helped him get into the finals by beating um, Azul Gracie Gregor with a Mew, a Fusion Mew Mirror. So. Oh uh, yes. Uh, the so unfortunately the Azul versus Vance Kelly match wasn't streamed. Azul uh, went and took he played all four of his power tablets in one turn to knock out uh, Vance's mute active Mew V Max, leaving him with a uh, prize lead of one to three. And then Vance goes ahead on his next turn and returns with his own. Did I say VIP pass? I meant power tablet. Returns <laughs> with his own four power tablets to one hit KO Azul's uh, active Mew, Mew V Max, getting him the game. Yeah, which that would I have, think is pretty impressive. That would have been an insane stream match to have, but right, we didn't unfortunately. But yeah, overall, I, this is just a very teched out Mew deck, and it mm -hmm. very much helped him because I, yeah, it just very much helped him end up getting to the world champ to the finals and winning. 
my body is a machine that turns tier one meta decks into mid decks with too many tech cards. <laughs> Me with my Kieran V Max deck. <laughs> but anyway, let's get to his opponent, Tord Reklev, and his Gardevoir X deck list. So Tord also had a good bit of, or not a good bet, but he had a he had a couple techs in here. So he had the. There's some interesting packs. So we'll, we'll just go top to bottom. So we start out with the Mirage Step Karelia, which allows you. Oh from... my god, that was such a good uh, meta prediction. Yeah, you know. so it allows you to get a. With one energy, it allows you to search your deck for three Corellia and put them onto your bench with no evolution required. So that helped him out a lot when he was behind. Tord got behind a couple times, and yes. it allowed him to in just... Game th in game three, he prized two Ralts. So having this Mirage Step Corellia really definitely helped him out. Yeah, that was really nice to have, because otherwise he probably would have <laughs> definitely lost instead of only barely losing like he ended up doing. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, we have that. Um... We have the Luminion. I haven't seen too many Luminion in Guardi list recently, so that's and that's cool that he brought that back. I think right. it, it also it def is definitely come in clutch. Oh yeah, no, it came in clutch a lot, allowing him to find a couple researches and also allowing him to use the Forest Seal Stone that he had in his list, mm -hmm. which also helped him out a couple times. I think finding a couple. What did he use to find it? I think he used uh, also to find supporters sometimes, but in a couple later turns. Right. So he had gotten a research once with uh, one of his uh, seal stones. Yeah. So the seal stone allowing you to search out any card in your deck, just allowing him to get that research, which I think allowed him to help win game two, if I remember correctly. Mm -hmm. And then um, what else is he playing? He has a lost vacuum in here, which is kind of uncommon for Gardevoir X to play. Um, and right. that inadvertently, I think, counters the box of disaster that <laughs> Vance was playing. Yeah. So that was. Um, um, you, I do ahead. want to talk about the Collapse Stadium. Not only does the Collapse Stadium get rid of one of Vance's uh, Pokemon on the bench, making him draw less with his Fusion Strike system, but it also allowed Tor to get rid of any Pokemon he wanted on his field when he had a full bench. And most of the times that ended up being his Luminion after he used the Forest Seal Stone, keeping it, making it so that he doesn't get knocked, uh, the Luminion knocked out by one of Vance's Muse. So that definitely uh, saved him from getting behind on the prize trade as well. Oh, yeah, no, that happened multiple times in all of his games. Mm -hmm. he, I think every game, yeah. I think he used the Collapse Stadium to get rid of probably the Luminion every game. And it was... Yeah. It was very impressive at how he played because even on his earlier right. stream matches i was watching him and he did just i was trying to i whenever i watch this uh stream i always try to predict what happens almost every time i tried to predict something tor did something completely different and that's just mm -hmm. impressive that he's able to he's on a whole that. nother level of uh playing yeah. when it comes to this game yeah, and then one other thing we didn't mention, Tord played two Reversal Energies, which normally you see Gardevoir play one. Having the two just allows you to get even more damage with your uh, Shiny Arcana Gardevoirs, which just allows you to take massive knockouts even later into the yeah. game. So, but yeah, that right. those are the top two deck lists. Unfortunately, Limitless does not allow us to have any more deck lists. Eventually, they'll come and uh, allow well, us to see. Let me check... Hang on, let me check uh, PTCG Legends, because I know they've been updating that yeah, no, quite I, a bit. So I know, give me a second here. And I, I know that Cyrus's list. list was on PC, PTCG Legends, so I'm assuming that there were other ones on there as well. Right. I want to see if I can find that Agron VMAX deck. Oh my gosh, yeah, no. So in, I was on stream. Yeah, in day two, there was an Agron VMAX deck that made stream, and that was a very impressive match, because it ended up winning... Was it? What did it win? Oh, it won against Lost Giratina. And that was a very impressive match to watch because I, every three few seconds, I had to go look up what Agron V and VMAX had to, like, <laughs> did because I've never seen them before. So, right. That was very, that was a very cool stream. Uh, I found it. He placed 43rd, but there is no list yet on oh. PTCG Legends. Okay. How far are the so lists? Like, on... uh, there's like half of them, or, well, half of them are like even listed. But only half of them have the deck list. But I found Sanders World's list. Oh wait, I'm I... gonna send this to you real quick. Yeah, so I... you can put it I on on this. the uh, stream. 
I'll have to scroll down a bit. He's uh, the fourth place. What is he? Sorry. 54th place. 54th place. Sander Wojcik. Oh, boy. <laughs> so Sander Wojcik mm -hmm. is a control player who plays a lot of control archetypes. Yeah. There's a lot of things going on here. I need a second to process this. The first thing that catches my mind is the Bofalant. Yeah, what does this Bofalant do? Oh, it's putting energy from your opponent's Pokemon into the Lost Zone. So that's... Interesting. Interesting. What does this Diancie do? Uh, it makes it so your opponent can't boss while the okay. Diancie is in the active. Uh, we have Regieleki. It's probably there for the Electromagnetic Sonar. Yeah, so it allows you to recover a trainer card. So any of the trainers in his deck um yeah. he has sun and moon badge which helps prevent all effects of disorder so that prevents all effects uh from a pokemon v of espion and umbreon and he has espion v max here which will which that's says just, that's just leafy camo poncho yeah for espion and umbreon uh -huh. um you know there's just a lot of stuff here that's a goofy list that's in here but there is a lot of just fun to play that yeah there's a lot of guard of war mew Lost Box Giratina. Oh, yeah. There's just a lot of decks that we expected. I guess there's some Chen Pao. There's a Chen Pao Palkia deck in top yeah, 16. Yeah, barely bu bubbled out from top 8 mm -hmm. with the Chen Pao Palkia deck. You know, with this list on. It's such a fun list, screen. too. Mm -hmm. yeah, nothing too crazy there. An energy, a single energy search is, is pretty cool. Yeah. And then a good good spear tomb tech for all the Mews we saw. There was three Mews in top eight yes. this year. Even when uh, Cyrus was on stream, she played him against a Mew, and the spear tomb yeah. won her that game. So yeah, but yeah. There's hopefully more of these lists come out in the following weeks, so we can look at all of them and copy them for. Yeah, we'll probably take a <laughs> we'll probably take a look at some more of these lists um, on our next not next week but two weeks from now that episode. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, but there is that. Um, I don't know. So the way the world championship match ended was, I guess, a little controversial for some. Controversial. People. <laughs> so in in. Game one, Van who won game one? Vance. Vance won game one, I think. And it yes. took about 40 minutes to get game one done. It was a very long game one. Game two mm. also took a very long time. So when we got to game three, or when once game two was done, there was about seven minutes left on the clock. Seven minutes left on the clock, yeah. So there was almost no <laughs> way they were going to play out the game. And they ended up going to time toward was turn zero and that ended up eventually losing him the game because vance kelly had the last turn so yeah so what sorry yeah. go ahead no you 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 read i did one thing i found was interesting is if toward had toward or vance had played three seconds slower vance would have been turn zero and toward would have won worlds you know when I, when they announced that toward was turn zero i was so confused because i thought that the timer ran yeah. out during vance's turn and after the stream ended i went back and looked and it it was literally three seconds it was so yeah. close but yeah people are i guess upset that the finals ended on turns and not in the game I and played out yeah yeah i i can kind of agree with them because i did want to see the game played out play out because that would have been a very right. interesting game three with how quickly they both had to set up in that game that would have been interesting to see what that would have put their boards at later in the game but oh, yeah um, it is yeah it's you got it towards towards game three he just was freaking speed running that toward is <clears throat> normally like known as a slower player just just because he takes all the time as much time as he needs like think out his ways but he was like going like double time like going through his deck getting everything set up to try to finish that game in the seven minutes but it's just just, just too late yeah that was like the fastest i've ever seen tour play ever mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> but yeah no that was very interesting i doubt there's going to be any changes to the finals of uh regionals and world championships and internationals so yeah. 
we might see this happen again, but I think this is just a product of having decks that take so long, like Gardevoir EX. Gardevoir is such a, like, a deck that takes extremely long turns. And right, right. Yeah, it just, it just kind of happened like that. I don't, I don't know. I don't know if we'll end up seeing this again later in, like, regionals this next year, but I feel like if it keeps happening, maybe something will happen, but I don't know. Yeah, that's just the way... We're, we're coming from a very, very fast format with tag teams and VMAXs, just big, bulky basics ready to attack on turn two. So people aren't used to having to manage their time wisely when we have stage two decks now and decks that take a lot more thinking and take a lot more time to get set up. So the bigger issue is just learning how to play at a faster pace for a lot of players especially yeah. the new ones that started in in like in the COVID era in the last couple of years who have only had that team up through evolving skies or sword and shield through uh like fusion strike or even sword uh, and really stars format even sword and yeah. shield through silver tempest and crown zenith mm -hmm, that too just every format for a long time it's been say, really fast I, anything before lost origin i would say because lost origin that's when like some yeah uh, high power thinking decks started coming in yeah lost box but yeah it's yeah it'll definitely be a change over the next couple of years it even looks like with some cards that are going to get released here that the uh format is going to slow down again there's a lot more stage twos mm -hmm. getting released that look very promising this so, There's a lot of interesting things coming out that we're going to take a look at here in a few moments. <laughs> yeah. But overall, what did you think about the Worlds over? I mean, it was a great watch. It sucked staying up till like 4 a.m. every night and not getting to see the entire stream. I did end up missing the closing ceremony, which we'll get to a little bit later. Um, but I was just I was just too tired. I woke up at like I, I fell asleep at two o'clock with my alarm set for 3.50 a.m. Because I was like, okay, I'm just going to take a little nap and I'll stay up for uh, closing ceremonies. And my alarm goes off. I look at my phone, same message. It's me saying, hey, closing <laughs> ceremonies about this card. I'm like, nah, bro, I, I'm going to sleep. And the thing is, I texted that in the wrong chat. I, yes, that was, was, that like, was funny. <laughs> I don't even think I responded to your message. You I didn't. think I just went to a different chat and responded that way. And it was... It was uh, half. It was half English. There was no grammar whatsoever there. Yeah, like that's that was the one issue with it being in Japan, with us being U.S. people. But mm -hmm. I'm I'm glad that Worlds is in a place that I guess isn't in the U.S. because Worlds was always in the U.S. and now it's not, right. which is it. I I think that's a good thing. <laughs> yeah, let's talk. Let's actually talk about closing ceremony stuff now, and <clears> then yeah. move on to raging surf because this is a perfect segue into worlds next year. So yeah, which interestingly enough, Hawaii, Honolulu, Hawaii. Yeah, I is going to be next year. I can't say that I expected that. Before this, I expected it was going to be somewhere in probably Europe because yeah, I didn't. I didn't think they were going to be so quick to put it back in the U.S. like they did. But I guess I guess Hawaii is kind of its own thing, which. <laughs> I totally expected it to be in a whole new location because we had Hawaii back in 20, it was either 2012 or 2013, I believe, uh, and for Worlds. And I think this is our, this might be our first repeat Worlds, but I could be very wrong with that. I'm not well too versed in my Worlds locations. But uh, the choice to put Worlds in Hawaii has been kind of controversial too. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So there have been a lot of, so Worlds, uh, full disclosure, the Worlds location is most definitely decided months, months prior to uh, the announcement of yeah. where Worlds is going to be. But currently there's a lot of bad wildfires happening in uh, Hawaii right now. So yeah. though the Pokemon company could not have predicted that that was going to happen, they could have held off on announcing the location due to the circumstances. Now, they did donate $200,000 for uh, wildfire relief. Another problem with Worlds being in Hawaii is uh, the native people, uh, very, very, uh, they're very angry about the over-tourism in Hawaii, and it's getting really bad, and I believe that 
having worlds in Hawaii is just going to make that worse. It's not going to be beneficial whatsoever. Yeah, it's <clears throat> it's going to be cool when it comes around next year, but it's as of right now, it's very controversial, and I mm -hmm. I see where they're coming from because having tourism anywhere is going to impact the living in the area and just things like that so it's well, the quality of life and yeah quality, quality of life that. and everything so that's a very understandable statement along on the right. wildfire side that's it is just unfortunate timing it would be mm -hmm. yeah there's there's really no other way to put that <laughs> so right i would assume by the time world rolls around next year that hope that hopefully hawaii will be in a better place than they are right now because it's a really mm -hmm. unfortunate situation that's going on there right now <laughs> right um there were also some other announcements mm -hmm. for uh at the closing ceremony so, yeah. uh, if any of you guys are into the vgc stuff we have a 19th terra type though we don't know what that terra type is we got some new moves announced we got the signature moves for uh I can't remember the names, but uh, Kobalion's future form and Raikou's past form. Oh, Thunder, it's like uh, Thunderclap something for Raikou. I hate you. <laughs> huh? It's not Thunderclap it's like, something. That's a meme that I sent you, Des. I hate you. No, the, I thought the move was actually Thunderclap something. No, it's not that. Hang on, race. I'm looking it up. I'm looking it up. I'm looking it up. Paradox, Raikou, signature move. Where did it go? It's it is thunderclap. It is thunderclap. I, I swear it... to God. Oh, the move is thunderclap. Okay, never mind. Don't listen to me. <laughs> is it just thunderclap? Yeah, it's it's thunderclap. Boom! Told you. Okay. Yeah, that's fair. I play VGC, not VGC, <laughs> but I played the games. Maybe I should get into VGC. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe I'll get uh, DQ'd for uh, trading my Pokemon. <laughs> but we're not we're not a VGC we are not a VGC podcast. We're not gonna get into all that controversy. There is a lot of VGC controversy that I am not qualified to talk about. I'm not even qualified to talk about Pokemon yet. You're still listening to me, hopefully, <laughs> probably maybe not. You know, that was the VGC Anyways. announcement. There's also a Unite announcement announcing yeah, I, I don't care. It was uh, like Blaziken, a couple cool. Blaziken, Mimic you and Masquerada. I know nothing I don't, about I, that. I, I I played Unite for like a month and then got tired of it mobas just aren't my thing yeah. um what you all are here for the tcg announcement yes. was about paradox pokemon so we got a couple paradox pokemon in the opening set of of scarlet violet scarlet which violet. was which was sorry let me remember them uh so here's my reasoning for yeah. why they aren't classified as paradox pokemon and why we even got them in the first place now you'd have to know about the video games to know this the Paradox Pokemon are found in a place called Area Zero. It is a area locked off to pretty much everyone in the entire region that has these uh, past and future Pokemon. Yet, um, in the games, you fight these Titan Pokemon, basically bigger versions of certain Pokemon. There's like an Orthworm, a Dondozo, a Bombardia, mostly uh, Gen 9 Pokemon. I think it's all Gen 9 Pokemon, actually. But depending on your game, the fifth titan is either a iron t or yeah iron treads, iron treads or great or titan. Great that's the name of them <laughs> but i believe the reason in the tcg they're not classified as ancient or future is because you are able to act in the games you're able to access these pokemon without going into area zero so you don't know these are paradox pokemon until you go into area zero for part of the in-game story these are they're just different pokemon to you because you don't know at this point so i feel i feel that is why those cards did not have that classification yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna assume that's what it is i didn't play the video games so i don't know that but you did so i will trust you on that so let's yep. go over the ones that got released so we have the first one that Jiggly i have here tail. is scream tail it has past jigglypuff yeah it has it's past jigglypuff it has two attacks one is for one psychic energy it does 30 damage it's not that great the second attack is a psychic and a colorless energy and it does 20 damage to one of your opponent's pokemon for each damage counter on this pokemon this kind of gives gardevoir a sniper a bench sniper well the screen tail has 90 hp and it has 90 so, hp base hp alone that is 160 damage a bench snipe yeah that's, now it gets crazier than that that's kind of impressive put put on a uh what is it the berry looking thing leftovers no the the, no. the cape thing wait is that what the you're thing that chin pao uses 
Oh, bravery charm. Put, bravery charm, yeah. <laughs> put on a bravery charm, you're at 140 HP. That is 260 damage at uh, 10 HP remaining to a bench Pokemon. And yeah, that is that's... for multiple turns. Then there's the newest card reveal. I can't remember the name, but it gives the active the Pokemon it's attached to 100 plus HP with the downside of your opponent taking one extra prize card when knocking it out, and it can only be attached to a non rule box Pokemon. That gives Screamtail 190 HP, which means you could do 360 damage to a bench. Yeah, that it's. I that would assume. I would assume this is going to see play in Gardevoir because that's a very, very good attack. I believe so. People are saying it's on the next drift. Drifloon, but I think this could be pretty good. The only thing, only downside, there are two downsides to this. Firstly, um, all Terra types having the extra ability of uh, not taking damage on the bench, and secondly, uh, Manaphy. Manaphy. <laughs> so yeah, there's a couple of hurdles that Screamtail will have to get around, but otherwise it's very good. Along with this, we get art, the art of the things. It has a little ancient logo up in the top right corner, kind of like the Rapid Strike. Similar, and similar to Battle Styles and the Ultra Beast back mm -hmm. in Sun and Moon. Yeah, so that's, I believe that's going to be very cool. It also has like a mm -hmm. half art with, for the ancient Pokemon, it has like rock formations. And then for the future Pokemon, it has a little techno-y background, which is really cool. I really love the design of the future Pokemon. The future Pokemon's are very cool. I I like the uh, ancient ones more, honestly. I like the. I wish Rocky. I wish the ancient ones would take up more of the card, like the future ones do. Yeah, and then along with this, and we if you're listening, if you're listening on Spotify, you can't see what we're talking about. So go ahead and check out the YouTube channel or my YouTube channel, Alolan <laughs> Tales. Check out this podcast episode. There is video along with it. You can see what we're talking about. You can drop a subscribe button. You can comment and tell me what your favorite new card reveal is from the World Championships. And, uh, um, I don't know, make some coffee or something. <laughs> Anyways, back so, yeah, to the video. Along with, plug. <laughs> along with all of these other things, we also get a couple things of information from the set symbols down in the bottom right corner or bottom left corner. Uh, these... These, at least the first set will be Regulation Mark G along with everything else, which is kind of impressive. Yes, this will be our all set. Par uh, Paradox, Paradox Rift. Rift. Yeah. Yes. And so then, this will be our November set. Yeah, November set. And then there will be 182 Pokemon or 182 cards in this set before Secret Rares. So that'll be yeah. cool. We got that information as well. So that oh, was just... One other thing. Mm -hmm. You see here that Screen Tail is an uncommon card, which means that these uh, ancient and future Pokemon are not limited to Hollows or EXs. Which yeah. I think is pretty cool. So, along with Screamtail, we also got five other reveals. We had Iron Bundle, which is the future paradox of, or future Pokemon of Delbird, I believe. Delibird, yes. Yeah. So it has the ability Hyper Blower, which once during your turn, if this Pokemon is on your bench, you may switch out your opponent's active Pokemon to the bench. If you do, discard this Pokemon and all attached cards. Your opponent does choose a new active Pokemon, so it's kind of like one end of an escape rope, which is kind of cool. And then yeah. its attack for one water and two colorless energy does 80 damage. And if the defending Pokemon is an evolution Pokemon, it can't attack during your opponent's next turn. There's enough ways to I get could... out of that right now. So Right. But I could see this eventually uh, seeing play as a tech in Chin Pao, if that gets any better. Yeah, that could be something. I Because right... uh, evolution yeah. Pokemon are going to be getting more, more prominent. Yeah, we'll get to that later. There are some things that we've seen yeah. that make evolution pokemon yeah. better but as of right now this yeah. isn't the best but it could definitely get better so we'll move on to our next pokemon which is iron moth the volcarona another future pokemon yeah another future hp one. here we'll I'll, I'll, we'll alternate describing the card yeah you go ahead okay iron moth fire type future pokemon 130 hp with the ability thermal reactor once during your turn, when this Pokemon moves from your bench to the active spot, you may move any amount of fire energy from your other Pokemon to it. I believe this is pretty much the exact same ability as, uh, is it not Sayu Ledge? The fire, the, the fire type, uh, Charcadet evolution. Charcadet. Um, I mean, that one's, it can move. Armor Rouge. Armor Rouge, yeah. It allows, it moves energy to the active, so it doesn't really, it's a little bit different, uh, okay. but yeah. And then you have, uh, Heat Ray, two fire, one colorless, 120 damage. During your next turn, this Pokemon can't use Heat Ray. So, not too crazy. I don't think this card is going to see play. But it yeah. is a it is a rare, so it's going to be a hollow rare. I wonder 
if the uh, right side of the card, the ancient and future like design, I wonder if those are going to be hollow. That would be cool. I feel like they'll definitely be hollow in the reverse hollows. Because if you if, if you think about it, uh, when we had the lost zone mechanic, the little like uh, pink oh, and yeah. green and blue dust, those were all holographics. So yeah, you're right. This, that, could that. Absolutely, that could absolutely be, happen. But yeah, as of right now, this isn't that viable. <laughs> maybe right. as a one prize you also <laughs> you also don't know what support these guys are gonna get yet we'll also get to that here in a few minutes yeah so that if something could there's could be some cards in the set that make these guys so much better and we just don't know it yet so yeah along with this we also got an illustrator rare or art rare i guess of iron moth yeah so i guess that confirms that we'll continue having our illustrator rares which is yeah. nice. I've very much been enjoying having the illustrated rares in every I do, set. I do like this artwork. I love the spacey background. Yeah, this is this is a very, very cool artwork. But yeah, our next Pokemon is Brute Bonnet. It is another ancient mm. Pokemon. It's a dark type 120 HP. It has uh, ability Toxic Powder. Once during your turn, if this Pokemon has an ancient booster energy capsule act attached, you make, may make both active Pokemon poisoned. So... We don't know what Ancient Booster Energy Capsule is yet, but we will have to I see how- I think it's going to be a tool card. Yeah, I would have, if I have to take a guess, it would probably be a tool card. So that'll be- uh... I also think we're going to get a special energy as well. Yeah, there will I feel like there'll be a special energy for Ancient and Future, like one of each, yeah. which will be kind of cool. Yeah. We can see Lugia become Ancient Lugia or Future Lugia. <laughs> ancient Mew. <laughs> yes but yeah and then we have uh rampaging hammer as the attack two darkness one colorless for 120 and during the next turn this pokemon can attack also not the best right now it does hit gardevoir and mew for weakness right now which is good but i still don't think it's worth playing in decks right now yeah and drabion hits me for weakness yet it's still one world we're moving on <laughs> yeah we also have another art rare of this the brute bonnet this is by tomokazu oh it's a tomokazu artwork I yeah, this, absolutely adore Tomokazu's artworks, especially on these art rares that he's this been one, doing. This one's very cool. It's very... If I had to describe it, I'd say psychedelic. Yeah, that's what the word I was going to use. Psychedelic. It, it's very cool. So yeah, now we're going to move on to the big hitters of this set. I turn. <laughs> okay, so now we have our first uh, Paradox EX with Roaring Moon EX, Dark Type, 230 HP. It has, uh, for two darkness and one colorless, Frenzied Gouging. Knock out your opponent's active Pokemon. If your opponent's active Pokemon was knocked out this way, this Pokemon does 200 damage to itself. Now that is kind of kind of crazy, but yeah. there's some things, there's some caveats here. Second attack, Calamity Storm, also two darkness and one colorless. 100 damage, you may discard a Stadium card in play and do 120 more damage. It's not too crazy. We don't really have good dark acceleration apart from uh, Dark Patch right now. Yeah, I was about to say, to be fair, I watched a video about this earlier, and they said if you get this out turn one going second, you can attach and double Dark Patch, and you can knock out yeah. your opponent's active Pokemon. If they only have one Pokemon, that just wins you the game. So this could be a very... This could be a well, dark the, Well, the next... The next card is a better dunk deck, and we'll get to that. But first, that is true. there is a nice card that can fare well with this that we have right now, being Emergency Jelly. So you're only if you attach Emergency Jelly, you're only doing 80 damage to yourself with Frenzy Gouging. Mm -hmm. Interesting to see. So yeah, this this one is definitely very good. Yeah. It, I am assuming that it'll end up seeing play either as its own deck or some tech in other decks. But. Possibly. Also, like I said, we have to see what other support cards we get for these Paradox Pokemon. Yeah, so then our final release or reveal was Iron Valiant EX, another future Pokemon. So this is 220 HP Psychic type. Its ability is Tachyon Bits, which is once during your turn, when this Pokemon moves from the your bench to the active spot, you may put two damage counters on one of your opponent's Pokemon. So kind of a... Let me say something. Here. Let me say something. Here. Yeah, yeah. If you're going first and you have this Pokemon out and you have enough switch cards in your hands, if your opponent only has like a Squobit or a Comfy or a Sableye or a Routes in the active and nothing else, you could just retreat three times and donk your opponent before they even get to draw a card. I think that's crazy. Yeah, this is it's this is also going to be a very good deck or not deck, but a tech index. Um, yes. Very similar, or kind of similar to Galarian Zigzagoon's Headbutt Tantrum and Holucha's whatever it is that put damage counters onto the yeah. bench. 
but this one does two. Entry. Yeah, that's what it is. But yeah, both of those do I, bench damage, and they've seen play in Lost Box and things like that. This will... I don't know where it'll see play, but this is probably definitely going to see play. I think this will see play in its own archetype, probably like a Donk deck. This is probably something you'd see more on... Um, the TCG live ladders or in a lean <laughs> challenge than in competitive play. Um, there have been talks that this could be a good replacement for uh, Zigzagoon and expanded decks, which hopefully we're getting some more cards from that for TCG live soon. <laughs> yeah. But other than, I don't think it can fit, fit well in Gardevoir. I don't think it can fit very well in Lost Box either. I mean, Lost Box is about, if any place it would rest, probably be the best one because Lost Box moves around a yeah, lot. Yeah, I just... So. I would rather play uh, Halu two Haluchas. Yeah, that that would be... Than would two rather. Iron Valiants. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, along with that, and crazy ability is an attack for two Psychic and one Colorless that does 200 damage. And during your next turn, this Pokemon can attack. It's it's an attack. It's not great. All, but... these, all of these attacks have been just okay. Yeah, well... Nothing too crazy. You know, it, we don't have a full scope of how good these cards are going to be because they're almost certainly going to be support cards around these yeah. Pokemon. So, right. yeah, there's a lot more to be revealed with these yet. But but I watched the booster capsule energy just be altered creation on a tool card. Say it. What is altered creation again? Because I do not remember what that is. <laughs> I didn't play the game back then. For one steel in one water, for the rest of this game, your Pokemon's attacks do 30 more damage to your opponent's active Pokemon, and you take one prize card, one extra prize card for the rest of the game. Yeah, that's off of ADP or RCS Dialga and Palkia mm -hmm. GX. So that would be very mm -hmm. impressive if that would if that is Ancient Booster Capsule Energy Capsule. That would be very cool mm -hmm. to see that. That was very now, hard to say. <laughs> before we before we go to the next section. Let's wait and save that for last and go on to the new set reveal. So yeah, so along with this, during Worlds, we got a whole bunch of drops from the next set at in Japan, Raging Surf. So Raging this is, Surf! <laughs> so this is going to be... Them, dude. So yeah, this will be part of the Paradox Rift set, or the English Paradox Rift set. So some of the big hitters we got in this was Garchomp EX, uh, oh Frost Lass EX, uh, and then some tools that have and things on tools uh, that have things. Tools that have attacks on them. So let's just go down the list. Do you want to start? Let's talk about Garchomp EX. Yeah, I'll go ahead and start. Can you uh now nah, I can read this. Garchomp EX, Terra Type Water, stage two, three hundred and twenty HP. Ter the terror ability, if it's on the bench, it doesn't take any bench damage. We're gonna talk about the second attack first before we talk about the first attack. <laughs> For two colorless energies, Sonic Dive. You discard two energy from this Pokemon, and it does 120 damage to one of your opponent's Pokemon. It can be the active or the bench, doesn't matter. The first attack... It's fucking insane. <laughs> For one fighting, one single fighting energy, 160 damage. Now that on its own is crazy. That's not all. Attach up to three fighting energy from your discard pile to your bench Pokemon in any way you like. Holy crap. Yeah, this is Holy insane. Crap. I When I first saw this, when I was scrolling through Twitter in between matches, I almost lost my mind because this was like the most insane thing I've seen released. This is the fighting support we've been waiting for. <laughs> yes. No, even seeing King the- Lou is going to be good. <laughs> At least until- I don't, know. I don't know if that'll fit well in Ting Lu. Until Vs get rotated out and then it'll be bad again. <laughs> yeah. But no. I'll play it until it rotates. Even the 160 damage for one energy is impressive. Having the attached three fighting energy from your discard pile is just even more insane. This is, this will almost certainly see play, I think. The only downside of it yeah. being a stage two EX, which is unfortunate. I mean, we have rare candy in format, so I think it'll yeah. be okay. You know, we like just... even the format right now is slowing back down again, I believe, so there will mm -hmm. like this will likely see play and not be too bad because even Gardevoir EX is a stage two and it's almost one. We just need year, a better. So. We need a better. We need a better Gibbite or Gibble card. We need like Incension or something because Gardevoir at least has draw support with Curlia. There's yeah. nothing here. You know the Gibble and but, Gabites are very unimpressive from the set. Those they were also released. So Garchomp is compatible with Irida, so you can go Irida Garchomp Rare Candy turn mm -hmm. two. 
or you can go Luminion, get, in, get a Luminion, Irida, Garchomp, Rare Candy, and just start swinging. Yeah, it'll be... I think you would play you would play a Squawkabelly and a Luminion in this deck, I think. Oh yeah, definitely. That's that's a lot of Because you want to get as many liability. fighting energy in the discard as possible. You want to get as many fighting energy in the discard pile as possible. Yeah. You know? It is a lot of bench liability, but throw in a Clap Stadium or something. <laughs> I don't know. You know. I'm not good at building decks. Yeah. There's a certain Twitter user who who craps on me every time I post a cool deck idea, but I'm not going to call him that one. <laughs> you know, that's the first one of these Terry X's that got released. It'll be very cool once it gets released. The next one that we got released yeah. in the same time was the Frostlass EX with a Grass Terra type. Uh, the Terra. It is not as good. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, it's. Also has the Terra ability. Oh, I need to be about it. Um, it has an ability just out of reach. When this Pokemon is in the active spot and knocked out, flip a coin. If heads, your opponents take one less prize card for their knockout. So that could be pretty cool. Um, putting out a coin flip is not the greatest for it, but that's... Yeah. It could be a meme deck that would be cool. I mean, one other thing about it is when it's in the active spot. So if it gets bossed... And or if there's a boss that gets played and then Sableye happens, it would still just be two prizes, which I don't know. That's it could be better, but if it's better, then it would be insane. So yeah. Then we also have we still got Garchomp. Yeah, we also have two water energy four or four two water energy, uh Frost Bullet, which does 140 damage, and then it does 20 damage to one of your opponent's bench Pokemon. It's not the greatest attack, so I mean it's there's really no archetypes that this fits in right now, so I doubt it'll be good unless some insane supporter card comes out grass, that helps it out. Grass support has been really lacking for the last like four years. Yeah, ever since Force of Giant really Plants good rotated. Support since Sigil, the Sigil and Goliath support are the last good grass attackers, unless you count Aggro, but like that that was kind of like a tier three deck at the time. <laughs> you know, Anyways, I mean, I'm getting off topic. Force of Giant Plants really helped that out, so. Yeah. You know, I doubt we'll see that Forest of Giant Plants come back to make that good. But yeah, also along with this, we got a Groudon that got revealed. It's that really no, mentioning. It's it's not that impressive. It's has an attack similar to Chan Pao's for fighting. It, it can only do two. But it's only a four energy. Yeah, it's not that impressive. Yeah. I mean, it might see some play in uh, Garchomp decks. Who knows? Yeah. Um, and then I'll let you go over these two machines. Yeah. So we got two tools announced, TMs. This is the sec I believe the second time we've seen TMs. We haven't seen TMs since the E series days. Since uh what is it? Not Sky Ridge. Expedition. Expedition. Let me I think Expedition was the last time we saw TMs. Let me look that up because I actually don't ever remember okay. technical machines. Yeah. So these uh tools are a little different than normal tools. You have to discard it at the end of the turn after you play it. Now the first tool is uh what is it turbo yeah it's just it's energy turbo is what it's called for one colorless search your deck for two basic energy cards and attach them to your bench pokemon in any way you like to support man's trinity charge pretty cool for early game setup might see some play the second one is what i'm more interested in em sneak attack for three colorless this attack does 100 damage to one of your opponent's pokemon with any damage counters on it you know what this fits well with? <laughs> you wanna know how I got these scars? This card can pair very well with Cramorant because when attached to Cramorant, it can use this attack for no energies. Lost Box now has a uh, Bench Sniper. Well, I mean, it already had Sable, I put like a turn two okay, Bench Sniper. But like, <laughs> but like, this can one-shot Curlia's, it can one-shot opposing, uh, Stabilize, Comfies, you can, um, trying to think, of, there's some damage modifier out there that can, well, no, you can't have the damage modifier because you already have the tool. Um, but yeah, this can be really good for Lost Box. So yeah, I mean, the only issue is, is you'll probably need to play a Halucha before because it has, it says with any damage counters on it. So that's right. about the only thing that holds yeah. it back a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, I did some research. Technical machines were in Expedition and then also the EX era. So, okay, it's been a while since we've seen these. That wasn't too bad. <laughs> but yeah, there was one in Expedition. So, 
you i guess right. i guess you were right so then we also got yeah. two supporters we got rika and larry so rika is look at the top four cards of your deck put two of them into your hand and then shuffle the other two and put them at the bottom of your deck so that's not too bad i think we have one seed play it's not gonna see play yeah we have better draw options like there's color colorus is better yeah colorus is just better even in a non moss box deck yeah, it, it just allows you to see five cards. This only allows you to see four. You get to keep the four cards, but course just allows you to see three. And in a, in, a, in Lost Box, it's just better. And then even in other decks, you kind of want to see get three instead of get two at most of the time. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Then Larry, we have flip a coin. If heads, search your deck for up to two Pokemon and put them into your hand. If tails, search your deck for a basic Pokemon and put it into your hand, then shuffle your deck. That's... If it was just search your deck for two Pokemon, then that would be very impressive. But because it's off a coin flip, it's probably not going to see any play. There's better card. We have Gloria right now that just searches for three non box Pokemon. We have Adventurous Discovery that searches for three V Pokemon. So like, and we also have VIP Pass on this ball. It's just not a very good ability on a supporter. Yeah, the they have made it three Pokemon and maybe or made the tails uh effect a little better maybe it'll see play it would see play but it's it's in the same realm as the shock it's just not good enough mm -hmm. to see real competitive play in my opinion yeah all right so other cards that got released mm -hmm. we got some starter decks we got a terra mewtwo ex and a terra skeleter gx so uh, i'll let you go with mewtwo Ah, you really gonna let me go with the boring one? Yeah. All right. <laughs> All right. This Mewtwo EX has 230 HP and it's Terra Lightning type. Uh, the first attack is Trans Charge. Attach up to do basic Psychic Energy from your discard pile to this Pokemon in any way. Oh, to your Pokemon in any way you like. <laughs> and you have Photon Genesis. This attack does 30 damage for each Psychic Energy attached to all of your Pokemon. Now, this could see some pretty good play in um, Gardevoir after Zacian rotates. The only um, thing is Gardevoir, that is Gardevoir can't accelerate to Mewtwo. That's Gardevoir the only thing that's an issue. cannot accelerate to the Mewtwo, but you can play an energy switch or something like that. And you also have Trans Charge, which can accelerate to the Mewtwo. Yeah. Uh, so for a turn one attack. Um, and yeah, if you have tons, if you have energy spread around your entire board, you can do tons of damage here. The only thing I don't like is the base damage being only 10. It's 10 plus 30 for each energy. Yeah, it's going to require a lot more damage to knock out things, or a lot more energies to knock out. So, yeah. As I wouldn't of, be surprised if a better attacker comes out for Gardevoir. You know, as of right now, I don't think that's going to see play, which is unfortunate because yeah. it's a it's a pretty good card. So, we need to come up with like a rating system for all the cards that we. <laughs> yeah. That we rate. Yeah. Uh, Hang on a second. So a lot of people tend to either love or hate the Dene. So let's rate things out of the Dene's. <laughs> Alright. How many Dene's do you give this? I'd give it a three Dene's out of five. Yeah, that's that's about where I would put it. It's not it's it can see play, but not right now, is what I'll say. It needs more. Yeah. Alright, so along, along with that we get Skeletor GX. So along with this we also get a Flicoco and Krakowler, they aren't really mentioning, they're not too great. So, the Skeledurge is a metal Terra type, it has 330 HP. Its ability is Explosive Song. Once during this turn you may discard a fire energy from your hand. During this turn, your Pokemon's attacks do 60 more damage to your active Pokemon. 60, 60, 60. That's impressive. This is kind it's of sim basically, It's similar it's to Volcanion, Volcanion EX, yeah. but double the damage. You know, Volcanion X double the damage and any Pokemon. So this can see play in any deck boosting damage. So, and it's not even once per turn. It's all, it's, it's. Wait, can this be stacked? It can be stacked. So you can do up this to. can be stacked. If you have four extra energy laying around in your hand, you can do 240 extra damage. Yeah, but you're not going to have four I, Still, if it's possible. That's. Theoretically. Theoretically. Theoretically it's possible. That's, that's very impressive. This is a very good a very insane ability doing 60 more damage in any way is just better like that's having two choice belts attached which is insane yeah so this i'm almost certain this will see play just for the ability alone and yeah definitely just for the ability alone because the attack is for two fire energy 160 damage and it isn't affected by any effects on your opponent's active pokemon so not too great of an attack but i mean it goes through it goes through 
effects of attacks, which is pretty good. Yeah, effects of like effects on Pokemon is going through that is nice because you can use there isn't a special energy in form, but you can put special energy and you can hit through a Duraludon, which is nice. Yeah. But it's he, crazy to think that rotation is already coming up in the next couple months. Yeah, no, rotation is going to come up again. That's it. Just it feel, literally feels like last rotation happened like literally last week. Yeah. But you know this old four months ago. Yeah. No, that's that's insane. <laughs> no, <laughs> that's no, insane. it was not. Four no, months no, ago. it wasn't. That didn't happen. Um, but you know this, I, I almost want to give this five to Denes. That's insane. I give it four four point five to Denes out of five. You know, just take the tail off the Dedenne. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's... One of the ears off. I'm almost certain this will see play. If not now, definitely later, because that's an insane ability. It is a stage yeah. two, which is a little bit rough, but... Just yeah. reprint Welder. Yeah, just reprint Welder. Everything will be fine. But, you know, this is what I mean by ta stage twos getting a lot better, because we're getting a lot of stage twos, like Skeleturge and the Garchomp from the last Garchomp. video. Yeah. Or last... Not last video. Last, uh... <laughs> re-release so there's a lot of stage twos coming out that are going to be really good um yeah you know that's all that there is for this we have one more leak or not leak i guess re re release we have more raging surfing about this we have a bombardier ex we have a mantike and we have then an avel tool which is kind of bad and then we also have a couple tool or trainer cards so we'll i, I think we should start with the trainer the gorgeous mantle tool yes so, um, I'll go ahead and do this one. Yeah. Gorgeous Mantle. If the Pokemon this card is attached to does not have a rule box. It gets 100 plus HP, and when it's knocked out, your opponent takes one more prize card for it. It's basically just a glorified expert belt from Platinum Arceus. Yeah. So this can see... This can see a lot of play. I think it'll see play in Guardi, especially if you have that Scream Tail or even that Drifloon, which now has an even higher damage output. Mm -hmm. Um... It can be, and it might even see some play in Lost Box, maybe, in the, for the mirror, just some massive yeah. damage. Uh, what else could it see play in? Um, maybe Chen Pao to put it on, like, a Bax Caliber, <laughs> just to make sure her Bax Caliber <laughs> never dies. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, this is, Des talked about it earlier when we were talking about Scream Jail, but this is definitely a pretty good trainer. It'll... I give this five good NAs out of five. I, I give it four. I think it's good. I Maybe not right now, because once again, we actually, not even maybe not right now. I think this could definitely see play right now. The one more prize is kind of not yeah. great, but even making, I, I'll actually, no, I'll say five, because giving like a Bax Caliber 260 HP is just insane. So it'll right. probably, it'll almost definitely see play. I'm definitely going to play around with it once it comes out, because that'll be fun to put in Chen Pao. All right, yeah. let's go up to Bombardier EX. So the first, okay. it is Carlos and has 200 HP, which is pretty good. Its first attack is fast carry. If you go first, you can use this attack on your first turn. So that's very good. Search your deck for up to mm -hmm. three Pokemon and three basic Pokemon and put them onto your bench and shuffle. Basic. Yeah. So that's, it's kind of a spiritual successor to battle VIP pass, I think. It's it's just a good a call for family. We haven't had a good call for family card. Yeah, even a good for call for family. Wild. So... It's, this could definitely see play once VIP Pass retains. Right now, VIP Pass is the undisputed first, undisputed bench Pokemon get a router on the first turn. Right. But once that rotates, once E Block rotates, the Bombardier, I, I this will almost definitely see play. I think maybe not all the I time. Think so too. Maybe not all the time, but since we're probably going to become a lot more setup reliant later, this will definitely help with that setup. So. Yeah. Yeah. This. What do you rate this? This definitely gets five. I give it a 4.5. Yeah, and then it, it's another bench liability. Yeah, no, there, there's a lot of bench Got liabilities it. now with Squawk Ability, Luminion, this. What else is there? I think that's about it. But yeah, there's there's just a lot of like two prize things that are mm. gonna end up living on benches, and that isn't necessarily right. the best for prize trades for on urine sometimes. Boss, but boss, boss game. Yeah, but I mean. It's better than having it as a single prizer and it being completely broken, so. Right. Yeah. Then we also have Mantike, the first Mantike card in, I think, 16 years. 16 years. So yeah, they, Mantike saw Bonsley get printed in Obsidian Flames is like, hey, I want, I want one too. And now Mantike Fun is. Fun fact. <laughs> you is now Pokemon that hasn't had a card printed in the longest amount of time since, uh, 
I don't think it's Stormfront. It's in, it it's is it, one of the Diamond and Pearl stats. It does say that again because I audio oh, might have cut out. Oh, uh, with the release of Mantike, we now have a new Pokemon that hasn't been released in uh, the longest amount of time, being Budu. With the last Budu card being released in Let's take a look Stormfront, at yeah, I was right, Stormfront. <laughs> So yeah, Be, just because of that, yeah. I give this uh, out of five Dedenes, I give it a solid ten. <laughs> you know, it's it's very great for a Manti coming back. The attack, it's uh, no energy, heal 120 damage from one of your bunch of Pokemon. It's not I the worst attack. Not at all. Not the worst attack. If Sableye wasn't one running around, I would say this would be kind of nice. But it's also I could see it. I could see it seeing play in control possibly. Yeah, this might be a I'm control. Sure type will find thing. a way to work this thing. <laughs> Yeah, you can put the cape on it, give it 130 HP. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> that would be goofy. You know, and then one last card, there's an Aveltal that really isn't great. It has a two Carlos energy attack that does 30 damage, and if the opponent's active is a evolution, it does 60 more damage. And then the second attack, two Darkness and a Carlos, uh, 120 damage and discard an energy. It's not that great. One out of five, the damage. You know, one out of five. It's... The crosscut attack, it isn't... 90 damage isn't enough to, like, one-hit KO an evolution Pokemon. So, like, right. it's not going to be seeing worth seeing play, I think. Oh, it's not going to see play at all. There's better you know, that's, out there. That's definitely going to be a bench... Or a... A bulk. <laughs> a bulk warmer. Yeah. So, yeah. So, I think we only have one more thing left. We have um, one more thing to cover... Hard it's actually, this so, episode has, did not go as long as I thought it would. You know, I thought we were going to be here for like three hours, man. This we were, yeah. we're flying. So, I'm glad we're not because it's already almost midnight. <laughs> yeah. It is after midnight. So one last thing that got revealed at the closing ceremony. Ace spec cards return, will be returning. And when I saw this, I actually got up out of I like jumped up out of my seat. I was I literally I literally gasped and I put my hand over my <laughs> mouth and gasped. No, I, I like, saw oh. that and I literally jumped out of my seat. I just did not expect that at all. I think we all kind of expected the terra types or not the terra types. Yeah. The the paradox Pokemon to come in, but having the Aspex come in. Do you have the picture of the outline they showed? I can look for it. <laughs> so I kinda wanna talk about that. And I also, after you find that, go back to the other A spec cards real quick. Again, if you're not, if you're watching us on Spotify, thank you for supporting us on Spotify. But uh, definitely check out the Alolan Tales YouTube page. These are things that I should have pulled up for. So this actually here, there's a better one here. This is the. Woo! Can I just have the art, please? Hold on, let's go back. Nope, not Link. I don't want Link. I promise you guys, I know I I know how to work a computer. Okay, so this is what the image showed on the reveal trailer, yeah. which so for those of yeah. you who don't know, a spec cards are item cards you can only play one of in a deck, very similarly to Radiant Pokemon, and they're uh, basically just a pretty busted effect as an item card. We had computer back and boundaries crossed through, I think through Plasma Blast. It was when these a spec specs were printed. We had Computer Surge, discard two cards from your hand and search your deck for any card. Incredibly, incredibly good card. This card still is like a $50 card in retro and expanded yeah. decks. I is it I don't I don't think it's legal in GLC, is it? Um, I don't know. I don't know. I, enough about I, I, don't, I don't know rules about GLC. And then we also have Dowsing Machine, which also saw a lot of play. Discard two cards from your hand and put a trainer card from your discard pile into your hand. Um, we also have Master Ball, search your deck for any Pokemon. We had uh, psych it was like Cyclone something, Cyclone Scoop Up or something like that. It allowed you to put any Pokemon from uh, your bench or active into your hand. Mm -hmm. And then most of the other ones were not that great. <laughs> they were very they were Pokemon specific. Like we had G Booster and G Scope, yeah, which saw a lot of play in Verizian Genesect decks. There was uh, uh, v the Victini piece. Um, we had a black Kieran and a white Kieran piece. We also had uh, Life Dew. I think it was like the Pokemon gets 100 less HP and takes one prize card, or what? Your opponent takes one less prize card, or something like that. Actually, pull up, pull up Life Dew for me. Yeah, let me let me go look at it. Life Dew. Life Dew 
if it gets knocked out, if the Pokemon this card gets knocked out to knocked out, it takes one fewer prize card, which is very good. Okay. Yeah. So not even minus damage. So like, you could your opponent would take one prize card for an EX or no prize cards for. I don't know what was a deluge blastoise. You wouldn't really like doing <laughs> yeah. blastoise, but you know. Um, another thing I wanted to talk about was the design of the ace spec cards. So half of the ace spec cards had a silver border, and the yeah. other half had a blue border. This half being because it was a team plasma card, which I think is sick as hell. Yeah. And you know what? You know what I think is interesting. The other day, I was just looking at these expert cards, looking like I need to get a complete set of these because they look <laughs> sick as hell. Yeah, no, and I need to do. I need to actually do that now because these are going to start going up in price now that we have the new expert cards. They they probably already seen a bump, but that I even on TCG Live now they're actually playable again because <laughs> they were they were classified right. as Pokemon for a while and now they're actually not Pokemon. <laughs> so yeah, but if we look at the new design or the outline at least, we see an interesting purple border around the expert cards. So I wonder if we're going to get a new border. You know, because all of the borders now are silver, so getting a purple border would be actually be really cool. That would be really sick. Uh, I wonder if we're just going to get a... What, what kind of hollow pattern we're going to get for these ace Yeah. Because, like, if they're making it as pop, like, as big as it seems, they're not just going to give it with, like, the regular glossy, glossy hollow design. I think they're either going to do a galaxy foil type hollow, or possibly, just for the ace spec cards, bring, bring back the uh black and white hollow foil design with the uh horizontal lines going yeah on. i was about to say it could be a horizontal line because on this a spec there's horizontal lines all across it that's over true. here so it could be that it that could even be like thick. i almost it, actually what was on the original ones it, they are there were lines on the original one i almost yeah, i think that that they, would definitely I think they happen. Kept the same it's possible they kept the same logo but the logo does look a little more purpley yeah the regular aspects they're more red you know the logo looks much more popular but yeah this is a very very cool thing i'm mm -hmm. i'm very glad to eventually play in a format with aspects because i never got the chance to play with them before so this will be very these cool. will be our these will be our february slash march set yeah because it does i think that these are coming yeah. yeah i think that's when these are going to come out so we should see those by the end of the year if not january ish and uh, we'll be covering it here on our podcast. Uh, mm -hmm. Soon to be your most up-to-date uh, news source for all Pokemon. <laughs> we I just need to get off my butt and edit videos. We won't take another two-week break. Well, we will take another two-week break. We won't take another three-week content break. But Yes. You know. But yeah, right. that's... Anything, anything else? That's all I had. I'm very excited for things going forward. I'm now... <laughs> going up to Worlds, I was getting in a little bit of a play drought but now i'm actually excited to play again yeah so this a... makes me this makes me more excited um uh a few few closing things uh go go play pokemon go out there get a deck if you don't if you don't play competitive pokemon go get a deck it costs 30 dollars to build uh the exact copy of the world's winning deck go to a local uh league challenge or your local game store Meet some new friends, play some Pokemon, but don't play Tinglu. Tinglu is mine, you hear me? Tinglu is my deck. <laughs> I'm going to be the number one Tinglu player. There's going to be a limitless page of me and Tinglu. You hear me? <laughs> Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this content, be sure to check out our other content. You can check us out on Spotify. You can check us out on YouTube. All of the podcast episodes are up on Spotify and YouTube with uh, video versions being available on the Alolan Tales YouTube channel. Check us out on Twitter, Alone and Tales on Twitter. There is no Twitter for the podcast because I don't feel like managing multiple accounts. I already have to manage multiple accounts for other things anyway. <laughs> you can check us out on Instagram, at Alone and Tales. Sam, do you want me to shout out your your Twitter that you never post on? You don't need to. <laughs> okay, I figured you didn't want that, so. I don't, uh, even, yeah. I don't even know my own Twitter handle, so. <laughs> just, I do. How do you because know my you, the, the only thing you do is just react to my Twitter post. <laughs> that, is, that is true. Okay. Anyways, uh, stay tuned for the 2024 announcement of Sam's YouTube channel. <laughs> Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you in two weeks.